To get started quickly, go to Game Object, North Star, and choose Compass or Radar or Screen Overlay. If they don't exist in the scene already, they will show up here. If you select Compass or Radar, you'll get this window, which you can dock anywhere, and that will allow you to quickly add or replace any of the compasses or radars that are ready to go in your project, whether it's the ones we've created or any that you create for yourself. In most cases, the, the player and default tracked icon prefab will be copied over when you add a new compass or radar, but you may need to set and some of the other settings, including the preset objects. Some have more and some have less preset objects for you and individual targets such as these demo targets in the scene may need to have a different tracking type depending on how the compass or radar behaves. In this example, we have compass one and we can see on the outside of the compass, these five targets represented by these pillars rotating as we move around the scene. Now let's switch to radar five. Using this radar, the player icon is actually rotating in the middle rather than always facing north. And this means that as we move towards objects, they don't always line up to where the player is facing. Here we can see clearly that the player is facing this pillar, but the pillar is actually not in front of the icon in relation to the radar. We can fix this by toggling on the adjust based on player icon toggle on each of these objects. And now the system will look for the player icon. As we move towards these, they will remain relative to the player icon in the middle of the radar, rather than relative only to the player forward of the worldview. So depending on how you set up your radar or compass, you may need to adjust some options in each of the targets. Let's talk about the different types of tracked objects. We'll minimize the required options here. And we have these three preset objects. We also have these target objects over here. Let's talk about what the difference is. The preset objects are actually children of the compass itself. These are visible right here. You can see the player centered, the location circle, and north point. This purple icon will always point north. You can turn these on and off in the inspector just by clicking these so you can get a sense of which icons are which. And for each one we have the details here. So the north point is currently set to point north and we're inverting the rotation meaning that when the player turns right the icon will rotate left. In some cases you'll want to invert the rotation and others you might not want to. We also have the location circle, which is going to point at a target. The target is something that you'll have to set at runtime or in the inspector. So for this, we can populate it with the goal target. And now as we press play, it's going to rotate towards this large goal right here. And as we walk by it, you'll see it quickly rotate around. And if we walk, move towards it, it will be facing forward. And we also have the player center. In this compass, the player is always going to be pointing north. And so we're set to do not move. And that just means that this object right here will never actually move. If we look at radar one, we have the tracked icon player one. And that's this little spaceship here. And we have this set to player forward. So now the icon at runtime will rotate as we rotate the player around. Now let's look at these target objects. There are two different types of tracking components. One handles the compass and the other, the track target overlay, handles the horizontal compass bar, screen overlays and edge overlays, any of the on-screen overlays outside of the compass or radar. Each object can have one or both. Earlier, we assigned the demo goal target to the location circle on the compass, this one right here. This object also has a track target overlay, which handles the on-screen overlays. On the demo wolf, we have both the track target overlay and the tracked target compass radar. For the compass radar, we have it set to relative point. That means that relative to the center, relative to the player in the center, the icon will appear in the direction and distance set by the compass. When we select the compass, we can see the tracked target range settings here. These settings only affect tracked icon set to relative point. Detection range handles how far away from the player before the object just won't be detected and won't be displayed on the compass or radar at all. The object range and UI range from center work together. The object range is in world space and the UI range from center is in the pixel space from the center of the compass to the edge of the circle at which the icons will appear. So in this example, any object that is 50 or more meters away 
will appear 100 units from the center of the circle. As they get closer to the player, they will appear at a minimum of five units away from the center. So they'll never quite get to the exact center, but you can of course adjust that so that they do get to the exact center if you'd like. If you've toggled on the fade on distance, you can set the distance in world space that the icon will start fading when the object gets to that point. Once the object is at 50 meters away, it will be on the outside edge as determined by the UI range from center. With these values, between 60 and 75 meters, it will start fading out as it gets further and further away. After 75 meters, it won't be detected at all. If you do happen to change this to a higher value than the detection range, then we do put some information here suggesting that you also update your detection range. You can also optionally choose to fade on the Y delta. If you have something that's flying or is far below the player, you might not want them showing up on the compass. So here you have options for the Y delta below and the Y delta above. These are relative to the player. Of course, don't forget to assign your player. Also assign your default tracked icon prefab, which can be overridden by each individual tracked object. And the global North Star settings will be populated automatically for you. Looking back on the wolf, we see that the tracked object icon is actually set to the target icon wolf rather than the default. And we can see that here on the compass. The tracked target overlay handles the horizontal compass bar, on screen and edge overlays. There are a lot of options allowing you to customize the look and also determine which objects are displayed in which areas of the overlay. If you select the main North Star screen overlay, you have the option to set your camera set your default overlay icon and overlay settings. You also have the option to enable or disable the global settings for the screen overlay, edge overlay, and compass bar. Note that individual tracked objects can override these values. On the demo wolf in the override section, we've enabled the override for the edge overlay by checking this box, and then we've enabled this to assert that the edge overlay will be enabled. And we can see that in practice here, all of the wolves do have an edge overlay, but the other tracked objects do not. Hopping over to the demo goal target, we can see that the custom icon prefabs have been populated, so we won't be using the default ones for these. In this case, we're using the North Star icon distance, which is a new version of the North Star icon, which has the distance text component. At runtime, we can see both in the horizontal compass bar and on the screen overlay, the distance is being displayed. You can create your own prefabs with custom logic to customize the look and feel of the overlays for your project. Your project is going to be different from every other project, so we've created a lot of override options here so you can customize things the way you want for your project and for the game you're creating. For each one of these sections, just toggle on the eye icon to see all the options here, and you can toggle each individual item to override the values for just this one object. On the wolf here, we are overriding the icon and the color on the screen overlay. Symbol 14 is this wolf icon, and we can also adjust the color to make it red, and then when we press play, we see the icons on these wolves are red, but the edge icons are still white, and as we transition between the two, it will slowly transition between... And those colors will be lurked as we transition between the edge and the screen overlay. If we open up the edge overlay overrides, we can see that the color is white. We can set that to another color, and now we can see the blue edge overlay and a transition between those colors on the edge and screen transition here. Note there are methods you can use at runtime to override these values even more, so you can achieve additional runtime logic in your game, such as highlighting a target different from the rest of the targets or changing the detection range or other aspects of an entire group of targets based on their type at runtime. This enables a lot of very detailed game logic. Please check out the docs for more information on that. There are additional overrides for the arrow, which appears on the edge of the screen when the edge overlay is active. The compass bar itself, including the icon color and other options, and other optional overrides as well. Check out the docs for more detailed descriptions on each one of those. Now let's dig into the compass bar. If you select the North Star screen overlay, you can find the compass bar as a child of that. 
Note that the North Star screen overlay is a prefab and you can customize this in order to customize the North Star compass bar itself in order to create your own compass bar with your own logic and your own graphics, which may go beyond the logic and graphics in this demo. The compass bar has a few options here, such as the Y position on the screen, the visible angle, which handles how far left and right that the icons will appear on the bar, and the fade angle. And this is the point at which they will start fading from full opacity down to zero opacity. Otherwise, they would just blink out of existence. We also have evergreen objects. This is great for these cardinal directions, these vertical ticks, and other items that you want to always appear regardless of all of the other tracked icons. Each one of these are prefabs, and you can add additional ones by dragging them or selecting them in this field here. Now, these objects also have a tracked target overlay and with a fixed angle, and these are the fixed angle in world space. So north is zero, east is negative 90, etc. If your north direction is not zero, you would need to adjust these values to accommodate your north direction. For these objects, since we only want them displayed on the compass bar, we are overriding the screen and edge overlay options and forcing them to be disabled. While the player is unlikely to get close to these objects in the game, this just ensures that they don't accidentally show up in the game later on. There are a lot of options in the North Star system, which you can customize and override at runtime to create your own system that works for your project, that has additional functionality and logic that you control, and which you can update at runtime. Check out the docs for more and our other videos as well. Have a great day.